And if you are experiencing any of these things, pack your shit and leave. Don't be me. Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Kiara J and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. Hit the subscribe button down below. Stay around for a little bit. If you are a returning subscriber, as always, thanks so much for watching me. Just got back from taking my dog to the park. I let him out of the car. As y'all can see, the back door is open. So I was like, let me make this video real quick. Part two. I did make a video on my channel about the early signs that I noticed and ignored or didn't really recognize fully in the beginning. So go check out that video if you haven't. It was something that affected my life for a very long time. Some things I minimized. And I really don't think that I knew how bad the cycle of abuse was until I came out of it. And then when I look back now, I'm like, oh my God, Kira, like you had no business being there. You could have lost your life. You could have got hurt real bad. Some of the things that this boy did to me, no matter how mad a person is, like you just certain things you just really shouldn't do. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get into this video. I'm going to stop rambling and tell y'all the signs when I knew for sure that my husband was definitely a narc. And I encouraged therapy several times. He told me he was going to get help. I did threaten to leave several times. And I should not have threatened to leave. I should have packed my shit. And I should have left. And if you are experiencing any of these things, pack your shit and leave. Don't be me and get drugged through the mud. And then get to a point where enough is enough. And then you leave. And all these years that went by, all this building was for nothing. And yeah. So, let's just get into this video. So, one of the first things that I noticed is that he acted different in public than in private. So, one of the biggest things with that was the way that he treated me in public was, oh my, like, he gave off, like, I love my wife, I'll do anything for my wife, I'm doing all of this for her, and he would be so kind to me and all this stuff, but then when we came home, he was, like, mean to me. And I would even say that to him in arguments, like, you go around and you talk to, and he did this thing where he talked to people about me, and he would, like, pump it up, like, I'll never do anything to jeopardize what I have with my wife. My wife is the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, all of these things that he would do to pump it up, but then never treated me like he appreciated me. The thing was, oh, my God, this man was so two-faced, y'all, like. Two-faced to the point, like, he was putting his own family and friends down behind their backs. And it wasn't just with me. In the last year of being with this man, he literally linked up with this guy that he told me that didn't even really fool with his dad. And his dad didn't fool with him. And was talking cash shit about his dad to this man. That I would be like, yeah, your dad is doing X, Y, and Z, but you need to be careful talking about him in that manner to these people who you already know don't like him. And even one of the men said, I told him one day that you was going to grow up and you was going to turn on him and look at it. You're turning on him. He literally said that we were at dinner and this man that does not like his father who raised this boy and gave him everything that he possibly could. We sat at dinner. And this man. Who don't really like his dad like that. Sat there and said. I told him one day. You was going to turn on him. And you doing it. Think about what that just. Like think about that. That went through my mind like. You turning on your dad. You're satisfying this person. And their ego. You don't turn on your parents. Especially on this type of time like I don't know and then like I had to sit here and listen to him bash I ain't gonna go into all his family but bash his family and then turn around and now like all things are good and don't get me wrong I say the facts about my family too like shit that they done did to me or whatever but one thing about it one thing about it anything I ever said I say that shit to their face too because my parents know how I feel about what they put me through. His parents don't. They don't know nothing about how he feel. And I even question today if what he said was even true or that was just a narcissist tactic 
to blame somebody else for his mess ups and his wrongdoings. And that's why he did that. I don't know, but it was ex absolutely uncomfortable for me to have to be in these people's faces. No one. All the stuff that you done did behind their back and said behind their back. And not just to me. Like, I don't understand you coming to me and you talking to me like I'm your wife. And you open up to me. But no, you going out here exploiting your family and your close friends to their ops. You not to be trusted. So the next thing was unable to take responsibility for his actions. He wasn't able to do it. No matter what it was, there was an excuse for everything that he did. And it was his mama, his daddy, for the most part. He blamed them. Well, my dad didn't show me how to do this. Well, my mama didn't show me how to do that. Well, my mama wasn't here. You know that. Blah, 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 blah. And that's why I don't like women. And that's why um I do this and do that. Because that's all I saw my dad do. Blah, 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 blah. We heard it all. We all have childhood trauma and our parents have done things. That is simply no excuse for that behavior. No excuse. Go get the help you need. And that's another thing. He lied and lied and lied about getting help. He would. He literally would go and sign up. And then I would ask him next week, how did that therapy session go? Or, or how's that coming along? Oh, y'all still got to go do it. And every week would say the same line. Until eventually I realized he's lying. He's lying about wanting and getting help. And if you in a situation like that and he's lying about wanting to get help, that is your cue right there to leave. Please don't be me. Please don't be me. He was unreliable. I literally could not rely on him for anything. The things that he did for me was probably after I didn't ask him to do it 10 times. Or I just started and took matters into my own hands and did it myself. And then he wants to try to help me and do it. Other than that, he was so unreliable. Could not keep his word. He'll say he'll do something, won't do it. And then I'll wind up doing it myself and he mad at me. He could he could go and start something and won't complete it. And now I got to do it because he didn't do it. When we first moved in our house, he was out here pressure washing the yard, cleaning up the yard, doing this, doing that. Y'all, after a few months, that mask fell off. That's not who he was. That's not who he was. Next thing was arrogant <sighs> and act superior always acting like he better than everybody else y'all he will literally go to work and tell lies to make it like he don't need his job oh yeah my wife is killing it in real estate selling these million dollar houses we starting a business this is what i'm focused on we got this we got that to literally try to make himself seem superior like he literally was so arrogant and would tell lies just to make yourself seem better than like other people and it was like really so disgusting like I don't even understand why he felt the need to do that but he always did that he would tell the stupidest lies too to people and I'm sitting here like why are you telling that oh I just be like gonna mess with people he didn't do a lot of stuff in the public or let people get close to him because he knew he was lying Next thing, and this was big, he lacked sympathy and empathy for others. This man hated emotions, hated feelings. He was super nasty to me, his parents, his family, anybody that know him, and I was about to say his name, anybody that know him, no, he lacked sympathy and empathy. Now, don't get me wrong, as we progressed in our relationship, you know, I would try to encourage him to do that a little bit more so he started doing it but it really wasn't coming from a good place it was just doing it to kind of like oh I am a good person to kind of feel like that but he didn't really care he would talk to his mom any kind of way would talk to his daddy any kind of way there would be times where I would literally have to be like hey yo come here did you see your dad face did you see how your dad felt when you said that like have a little bit more compassion you do not have to talk to him like that. He'd be like, I know, I know, but he just be pissing me off. Well, I get that. But I can see it all over his dad's face. Sometimes we be at the racetrack and he would talk to him some kind of way or say something out of the way. And I'm like, you don't think that hurt his feelings? You don't think that made him feel away? You don't think that made your mom feel away? You don't think that made me feel away? Okay. He was emotionally distant and unavailable, y'all. Like, so emotionally distant. And he would say, I'm not a robot. I have feelings and all this stuff. 
But when it came to emotions, he would be ready to fight me. Anytime I crawl, he laughing at me, picking at me. He would take his taser and he said that he had to like test it every day. He would literally point it beside where I'm at. And I'd be like, can you please stop doing that? Like I have anxiety, so that bothers me a lot. He didn't care. He thought it was funny. Thought it was funny that I cried. Thought it was funny that things get me worked up. Like, what? He did not understand anything that dealt with emotions. Oh, and also, too, with, with being emotionally distant and unavailable, he was like that unless he wanted something. And even his own father said, in a courtroom, said, he's like that unless you're doing something for him. And he said that over and over and over again, even throughout our marriage. He knew, even knew himself. Unless it benefits him, you can't get him to do nothing. Next thing was, very controlling and unable to relax. If we was on vacation, this boy cannot relax. He always on guard. Always got to take our weapons everywhere. Which I understand that safety is first. But the way that he went about it, I didn't realize that that was a problem until I got out of the situation. And honestly, I met other law enforcement officers. And I talked to them. And they're like, yeah, no, I don't act like that. Like, no, we don't do that. All of us don't act like that or do that. And I realized, wow, he had me so snowed that the reason why he did certain things was because he was a law enforcement officer. That's why he was so controlling and unable to relax and all this stuff. And it's like, no, like, that wasn't the case. That's who he became because he got a little bit of power. The next thing is he became so furious when he was challenged. If you challenged him in any way... He became outraged. He would rage, y'all. He would destroy my property, threaten to destroy my computer, threaten to break my phone. He would. He broke my camera, then turn around and bought me another one because he knows that I use it for YouTube. And I guess, like, anything that's to stop my flow, he would do it. Like, he would literally become so furious if you challenged him in any way, emotionally, physically, mentally, like... He would get so mad. When his parents did it, he would just back up from them. His grandparents, um, his friends, his family. If anybody challenged him, you're going to get cut off in his life. I promise you, you are. And I, th I said this in the other video. He was a great liar, y'all. But he would literally lie and distort facts. So, so, so bad. He had zero integrity. Zero zero integrity and the crazy part about that is is he always want to talk about other people not having integrity but this man had none none no loyalty to anybody and the crazy part about it is i don't even know i seen it and i knew about it and other people pointed it out but i don't even understand why did i not think he was doing that to me he was doing all these things to me too behind my back this was a big one y'all that he did this man would provoke people and then blame them for the fight. Right before the discard, he got into this little altercation. When he walked up to the man, and the man felt threatened in no sense, and basically bucked back at him, and then he got mad and pushed him, and then he got mad and called himself going to kill the man. Like, you going to kill somebody because they pushed you? I understand pushing them back, maybe hitting them back. But you're going to kill the man because he pushed you. One thing about the narc, y'all, they going to always play the victim, but say that you're playing the victim. It, it, it never fails. It never fails. It can be clear as day. They're always the victim. They have trouble admitting their mistakes and then also irresponsible with money. If I am so grateful today that he trusted me, and he saw that I was knowledgeable enough to handle the finances. Because had I not, or had he not, we would be in so much debt and in such a bad place financially. One thing that I can say that I'm so grateful for is that I get to walk away from this marriage with zero debt and a great credit score. And he gets to do the same thing. And we can rebuild our lives from the ground up if we have just no money like if it winds up being we have no money that's okay because we don't have no debt and we have good credit and we can rebuild our lives i'm thankful for that every single day because this man would literally take the money and just be so reckless with it and i had to figure out a way to make it where you know this is our spending money you do whatever you want to do with your spending money and i'll do whatever i want to do with mine 
But this is how much that goes back in the savings. And this is how much that needs to be in the checking and our joint accounts. Because if not, he will literally take all the money and be irresponsible. And, and the crazy part about it is it would be things that could literally make him more money. But he's not willing to put in the time and the effort and commit to being better in anything that he did. And a lot of times he would mess up my flow. And I had to really tell myself, you know what? I'm going to work out every day whether he do it or not. I'm going to eat right whether, whether he do it or not. I'm going to save whether he does it or not. I'm going to be responsible whether he is or not. Like, that's the type of mindset that I had to have. But anyway, that's literally my life with the narc. And these are some of the things that I experienced with the narc that I wish I didn't. <laughs> And if you are in a situation like this, y'all, please get out or seek help. And if they're not seeking help, you don't need to be there. Like, you seriously do not need to be there if they're not seeking help and willing to change. And also, if they have fine monkeys, people who support them or support their Ill, Ill behaviors. Because, like, mine, he has some really bad anger issues. His family seemed to know it. And it all came out in the end. But nobody said these things to me. Nobody even tried to, like, intervene or... Look out for me. It was almost kind of like, oh, he's with her. He's doing good. People would say, oh, this is like this man changed in six months. Or this is the best we ever seen him. Or he turned his whole life around when he got with you. What are you doing to him? Like they would literally say things like that. Everybody would say, oh, y'all going to get married. And she's good for you and blah, 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 blah. But nobody ever thought about, thought about the shit that I was really going through behind closed doors. And it hurts my heart to know that people even knew. Um, who this person was even before I got with him and no one even tried to even talk to him to try to help it out help help him out so that he could be better besides one person one person I know one person I wish I could shout him out but I won't do that um, but his stepdad he was real I'm gonna say it his stepdad was real honest with me and real vocal about who my ex was and he was the only person and I have a lot of respect for him. I don't have respect for a lot of people. But I have a lot of respect for him because he was honest with me about him and about his mother. He told me a lot of things. We had a lot of conversations where that man was honest with me about a lot of things. And I will forever appreciate him. And he always showed love to me. I don't know if it was genuine or not. Because sometimes my ex would say that that shit wasn't genuine from him. I don't know. But that man, like, he looked out for me. He he always showed mad love, no matter what it was. Um, and I appreciate that. But I'm going to head off here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys have experienced any of these things, please let me know down in the comments, y'all. But I'm going to hop off here, and I'll see y'all later. To the doodles.